Hey, Cornerstone. It's uh, Monday morning. I'm Pastor Phil, and you know what time it is. Go ahead and brew a pot, or if you've already done so, because you are uh, here while you're, you know what you're all about, then go ahead and pour yourself a cup, and uh, let's get started. That was definitely too hot. Okay, well, playing injured. Let's go. So we are on uh, week 14 of our Coffee and Catechism series. It's actually our second week, but it's question 14 for a catechism. It's a question a week. So we're, we're jumping in uh, after, uh, you know, we're jumping in about a quarter of the way through. But still, question 14 is, did God create us unable to keep his law? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, because of the disobedience of, his, of our first parents, Adam and Eve, his first creation, all of creation has fallen. We are all born in sin and guilt, corrupt in our nature, and unable to keep God's law. This verse sounds, or this this question sounds a bit unfair. Did God create us unable to keep his law? Like, if no one can keep the law, like, then why did God make it? And if if God made this law so hard, or if God made us so weak, you know, isn't this whole system kind of unfair? Well, if you look at Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and three, you'll see that God created Adam and Eve and placed them in Eden, this perfect place. And he gave them a choice. Don't eat from this one tree. Don't do this one thing. Everything else is fine. Don't do this one thing and it'll all be okay. And Adam and Eve were deceived and they ignored God's command and they sinned. And as a result, all of us inherit that, um, that trait of sinfulness, of rebellion. Um, In Romans 5, it says this, Therefore, just as uh, sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. This verse is a real downer. But in this chapter, it talks about how, uh, even though Adam uh, and Eve and their sin brought sin and death to all of us, Jesus brings life to all of us because his righteousness, his righteous life and his sinless death pay for all of our sins and set us free. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to hit things, uh, hit the nail too, too hard on the head here, but think of sin as a disease. I'll pause for you guys to get angry. (laughs) I know you don't want to talk about it right now, but think of sin as a disease and Adam and Eve, uh, caught it and it is a genetic disease now it's passed on to all of us and all of us have it and the symptoms might vary some people are selfish some people are have have addictive tendencies some people are are stuck up some people are are um prideful some people um are are mean and abusers and we all have our own symptoms but the disease is all the same and that that disease is is, is within us it's what it's it's an innate inability to keep god's law and God knows this. And so when God gave humanity the law, even back in the Old Testament, God constantly gave you know, allowances and says, here's what I want you to do. I know you can't do that, so let me make this possible. And, and that's, you know, we talked about this actually in our Hebrews class a few weeks ago, back when we were meeting at church. And we said that uh, um, you know, the laws that God gave were so difficult and so tough, but the Israelites were supposed to obey those laws in a community as part of their nation. They, they were commanded as a group to obey those laws and to bear that burden together. And that's what uh, God is creating in the church. We are a people who bear the burden of righteousness, of obeying God, of following his commands, of being sent, as our current Sunday Sermon series says. We're called to go together and to make disciples. We're called to, to be a holy people, a royal priesthood. God is building a, a new nation, not based upon uh, where you're born or who you're born to, but based upon whether you are born again through Christ. Now, I want to end today not talking about the catechism, but just sharing a quick thought from my own devotions. And I, this won't take much longer, I promise. Uh, I read a, um, a Bible through a year to the New Living Translation. I usually read the NIV, but I want to do a Bible in a year. So I'm reading this uh, NLT Bible. And every day, I uh, read an Old Testament passage, a New Testament passage, a psalm, and a small part of a proverb. And the proverb uh, that I read the other day was Proverbs 12.3. I'm going to show you two translations of this proverb. Wickedness never brings stability, 
but the godly have deep roots. That's what I read the other day in my devotion. And the NIV says this, No one can be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. And uh, I think both verses are saying something very similar here, or both translations, I should say. And it's, and it's this, uh, take some time now that you kind of have to, those of you who are stuck in your homes, and put down some roots. And my wife and I are always talking about how, how, how fast life moves and how much there is to do. And oftentimes it's things we don't even want to do, but we feel like we're obliged to do it. So my advice to you in this season is to use it to put down some godly roots, to, to get back into God's word, to read it at least four times a week, to spend time in prayer every day. You don't have to spend an hour in prayer a day. Spend a few minutes in prayer a day. Make it meaningful. Express your heart to God and give God time to speak back to you. Worship. Sing songs of praise in your own home. When we're streaming church on Sundays and Wednesdays, enter into worship. We're, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to stay connected, also to dig deeper and to grow closer to God. So please, use this time to put down some roots. Cornerstone, it's great to talk to you today. I hope you have a wonderful Monday, and hopefully we'll see each other soon. Bye.